Hi, I'm Mike Lucius in the Pace Center Training Room. In the next video, we'll go over the step-by-step -step basics of developing a thermal profile for both the removal and installation of a surface mount component using our IR3100 and IR4100 infrared BGA rework systems. To get the most out of this video, we recommend first reviewing the previous video, Introduction to the IR3100-4100 Infrared BGA Rework Systems. To begin, we must determine whether to execute a previously saved refo profile or develop a profile for a new application. Saved profiles can easily be loaded and executed in production mode. New profiles are created on the profiler screen while in developer mode. In developer mode, Profile parameters are initially set in accordance with any specifications from the component and solder paste manufacturer. The thermal properties of the component and board, particularly around the component mounting site, also impact the profile parameters. Next, we determine which vacuum pick is the appropriate size for the job. For maximum thermal efficiency, we want to choose the smallest pick that is still capable of lifting the component. Make sure all the lands or pads are free of solder and contaminants before starting an installation process. Now, we're ready to develop a new component installation profile. First, we place the board into the board holder and roughly center the component mounting site using the alignment laser pointer. With the board now in place, we will commence the step-by-step -step process on the IR system's integrated software. The software will first prompt you for a component to be placed in the component centering nest. Once the component is lifted from the nest, if using the flux dip option, a prompt to replace the centering nest with the flux dip tray appears. This will allow for even application of gel flux to all the solder balls. Once complete, the component is displayed through the IR's vision overlay system. Here, the image of the component's underside is superimposed over its corresponding land pattern for precise alignment. The image can be adjusted using manual or autofocus. Large components can be aligned at high magnification with the quad field imaging option. Next, Align the component to the LAN pattern in theta, Y, and X. When complete, the component is lowered and placed on the board. Aim the laser pointer from the IR pyrometer adjacent to the LAN pattern on the board so it will sense both the component and the PCB. This allows the pyrometer to obtain the most representative temperature reading of the solder joints during the reflow profile. Now select Start Heating to commence the heating cycle. Allow the IR system to reach the set trigger temperature. A typical component reflow profile for either installation or removal consists of five distinct phases or zones. These are preheat, soak, ramp, reflow, and cool down. In the preheat zone, the component and board are heated up to between 125 and 150 degrees Celsius flux solvents will begin to evaporate. 
using a safe ramp rate of 1 to 3 degrees Celsius per second can help prevent thermal shock and board warping. Next is the soak zone. Here, thermal equilibrium is established throughout the assembly to further help prevent thermal shock or other potential damage to the board or component. Thermal equilibrium is particularly important for high thermal mass assemblies to both minimize heat sinking from the work area and allow component reflow to occur within a safe, efficient time period. At this point, the flux volatiles have fully evaporated and flux activation begins, which removes oxides in and around the work area. The ramp zone is flexible. It can be used to transition from the soak zone target temperature to solder melt temperature or used as part of the reflow zone to provide additional bottom side heat for those thermally challenging applications. Alternatively, if increased thermal delivery from the bottom heater is needed, it can be brought closer to the board as the bottom side components will allow. However, we'll want to be careful about applying too much heat from the bottom heater to help minimize unwanted reflow of components on the bottom side of the board. Next comes the reflow zone, where the component solder joints are typically heated from 20 to 40 degrees Celsius higher than the liquidus or actual reflow temperature of the solder alloy. As necessary, you can extend the time or increase the target temperature of the reflow zone to ensure that the optimal time above liquidus is reached to help achieve ideal soldering conditions. In the final cooldown zone, Heat is no longer applied and the cooling fan is engaged to bring the component joints below solder melt temperature. Here, the rate of cooling, as well as time above liquidus, or TAL, are critical to help assure the optimal structure and integrity of the solder joints. Component removals on the IR system are easy as they require fewer steps than an installation. Load the board in the board holder and roughly center the component using the alignment laser pointer. The vision overlay system will then come out of the housing and turn on so we can ensure the vacuum pick is positioned over the center of the component. Once aligned, the heater head will lower to the board to begin the heating cycle. The component is run through the heating cycle to ensure complete reflow of all solder joints prior to lifting it from the board. Unlike an installation profile, a component removal only requires that all the joints fully reach solder liquidus temperature. With 10 seconds remaining in the reflow zone, if auto removal is selected, the vacuum pick will lower onto the component and engage. Vacuum is then initiated at the end of the reflow stage and the component is lifted from the board. For removal of components which may not be perfectly perpendicular to the pick and not form a tight vacuum seal, try using the micro pick with the flexible vacuum cup. Alternatively, the pick vac can be used to lift the component manually from the board after reflow is achieved. After the component is lifted, the cooling fan will engage and the cooling zone should be allowed to complete before safely removing the board from the board holder. In either an installation or removal profile, the IR system's unique solder cam allows you to view the exact moment of solder reflow. With the ability to take and save pictures for further analysis, this feature can greatly assist with profile development or process verification during production runs. In the IR3100 and 4100 companion guide, which you will find in the training and support section of the PACE Worldwide website, we'll explore advanced features and application tips to help you get the most out of your IR3100 or 4100 system. For more information on the IR3100 and 4100 systems, please visit us at paceworldwide.com.